Good morning. I'm Mary Winters, a gerontologist, the owner of About Senior Solutions, and you are watching Visionary Aging. We put this program together because we want you to be empowered and have resources. We plan things like our vacations and weddings and retirements, but do we think about what we want through our entire aging process and make sure that we have those things in place and that we are um, kind of leading the way for what we need. We think of us about Senior Solutions as the, the hub or the conductor of the orchestra for anything that you might need in your aging process. We plan, we advocate for people, and we put a fun little half hour program together for you to watch. We have a great program. We have Dr. Mendel on with Gentle Mobile Dentist. Yes, you can get a mobile dentist to your house. We're gonna celebrate someone's birthday and they're asking for you to send cards to the PO box in Iowa so that they can celebrate their, fam their, their mom, their grandma, great grandma. And we also have our Melinda Hughes on with us, and she is going to give us some fabulous tidbits on, and we're going we're gonna to share it with you later, so hold on. It, in the meantime, we have Steve McCall, and he has, I'm pretty certain, he has a caregiver question for us. So let's check it out. <laughs> Hey, Steve, how are you? Good. Good morning. Good morning. So what kind of a caregiver question did we get? Our caregiver question today comes from a viewer whose parents are living at home mm -hmm. and they would like to know what kind of medical, mobile medical services are available for their parents. There are lots and it depends on what kinds of things you need and what kinds of things you'll qualify for. And I was actually talking with Dr. Mandel a little earlier and she was sharing some mobile dermatologists uh, with me, but um, which was kind of a new thing for me. Uh, but we have Dr. Mandel with dental and that's expanding. She'll share more about uh, the types of things that they can do in dentistry now mobily, but we can get podiatrists to your home. We can get nursing to your home. We can get physical therapists to your home. We can get, uh, we can get a whole variety of some great resources, speech therapy, occupational therapy. We can get some great resources to you, mobile doctors. So right. I think that they, if somebody is stuck at home or unwilling to leave the home, uh, we can definitely set them up with a plethora of uh, medical services for sure. So that's a great question. A plethora? A plethora. <laughs> my, one of my favorite movies. Oh, there's a movie called The Plethora? No, there's a line from a movie where they oh. a plethora. <laughs> oh, interesting. Well, you want to hang out with us? You want to you want to share with us today what day it is later on and right. that we can it's celebrate one of my favorite days of the year so I absolutely would love to. Okay, well then stay tuned and we'll hear what not only what day it is today what Stephen McCall's day uh, favorite day is of the year. So, um so hold on and we're going to celebrate a birthday. So let me share a little bit about that. So we I'm have happy. thank you. We have a fantastic little lady here from Iowa. And her name is Iona. And I'm going to try to find her picture here. There she is. And it's really neat because the family put something out in the Perry News. They said they tell it all. So in the Perry News, they announced that uh, the family is wanting to send, have greetings and well wishes sent to Iona, Iona Thornburg of. Um, let's say of Perry, Iowa to her PO box or to an address there so that everybody can celebrate her birthday. She is at 2110 5th Street in Perry, Iowa. In fact, I think I put the address here in a crawler. So let me just put that one up and there we go. There's her birthday, her um, location for her, her birthday. But let's see, I don't know that they say a whole lot more about her other than um, her sons, Gerald and his wife, Kathy and David and Rhonda, um, they, and the grandchildren, Janelle and 
uh, Witchell and Ryan and Jill and Brandy and I have 16 great grandkids. That's pretty cool. Uh, they are all wanting to celebrate her and she looks fantastic. Actually, I gotta say, it's kind of crazy because looking at her, she looks a little bit like my grandma who is also from Iowa. Maybe there's a distant relation there. So please celebrate her by sending a card out. And um, I hope she enjoys her special day, which is actually Tuesday, August 9th. And my mom's birthday was on the 2nd. So happy birthday to my mom. And let's see, next, I think we're going to go to our Dr. Mandel. So let me see if I can find her here. Uh, let's see, here we go. We are here, here we go. Where is Dr. Mandel? Is right here. So we're going to bring her on in just a second. Hi, everyone. Hi, how are you? Great. Good. Let me get rid of our little crawler here. Um, let's see if I can get rid of it. Let's slow it down here. <laughs> Hide it. There we go. So, Dr. Mandel, you are growing and getting bigger and stronger with more equipment and more dentists working with you over at Gentle Dentistry. Mobile Dental. Mobile Dental. And so tell us a little bit about how does that work? How does somebody find out or reach out to you other than through our office? How do they reach out to you and, and start yeah. service? Um, it depends on what your needs are and where you're living. So sometimes if you're living at an assisted living, we might be recommended. Um, if you're someone that's already getting home care um, and you have a really hard time leaving the house, and um, uh, and you already have other services, um, it's great to remember that a dentist can come to. And we can bring everything bedside. So we have a mobile um, drill. Uh, we have digital x-rays, actually, which is amazing. It is amazing. Um, we can do fillings at home, deep cleanings. We can even do extractions uh, if necessary. So we wow. can do almost everything that an office can do. And we can even do some root canals now, which is- amazing. Oh my gosh. Well, I have had the experience of actually being in the room while you're doing your dentistry. And it's so I guess, soothing, I guess, um, for uh, anyone just to be able to be in their own home, relax on their couch or whatever space they have set up and and you just make them feel so comfortable so it's amazing it's it's great work that you do for sure and i have the little scroll there for you so we're we're interviewing dr mandel of gentlemobiledental.com and tell me a little bit more about some of the interesting stories i know you know we've had mutual clients together too but tell me a little bit about some of the some of the experiences that you've had with your clients as a mobile um, dentist i love getting to know my patients and finding out about their families and what their lives are like and um i what's nice about um my practice is that um, part of it is that i get to spend a lot more time with my patients um, because we're coming to your house and my patients need a little bit more care and it gives me the opportunity to not have to rush and just get to know people in a different way. Um, and I will ask them about their kids and how they've made the decisions in their life that can help guide my decisions. And yeah, it's interesting. Um, I, I think I can learn how to live a happier life uh, when I can learn from my, my patients. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, actually. Um, yeah, so share a little bit about what kind of led you into mobile dentistry versus having a regular practice. Uh, it was just completely luck. Um, I met um, at my old job, I, I met a woman who was doing it. And um, I told her about my desire to not be stuck in an office, to not kind of go the typical dentist route. And she was doing it and she hired me and I immediately loved it. And within a few months, quit my jobs in the offices. Oh, that's uh, I find this job just so much more fulfilling. Um, I'm not rushed in an office in 
dentists are so rushed. They see between like 10 to 15 patients in a day. Uh, I maybe see three or four patients in a day. It's mm. completely different. Yeah. Um, and I really feel needed, which is so nice. I Everybody wants to feel needed. <laughs> and oh, for sure. It to me. <laughs> I, I remember having a client who the family said, well, we, she just really needed dentistry and she was living in an assisted living at the time. And she was really challenging and they were so afraid there. I think she's probably going to bite the dentist's fingers off. I don't think she's going to be willing to do anything. And you showed up and they just, their jaw dropped and she was cooperative and willing to get through whatever process. And you were so I guess gentle in the word for your business is a really great title because you were just so gentle with her and you just have a really natural way with somebody to reduce their resistance and their fear. And she was so cooperative. It was absolutely amazing. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it comes from being able to take my time that I don't have someone mm -hmm. telling me where I have to go next. Um, and just my love for my patients. Um, sure. It's yeah, it makes it easy. That does make it easy. So what do you see in the near future? What are the big things that you'd like to see in mobile dentistry moving forward um, as far as your practice or um, the industry? God, I'd like more people to be able to access it. Um, I'd like um, more. I would like Medicare to start covering it um, in a different way. Um, Medicare already covers a lot of other mobile um, medical care, and I, I don't see why dentistry wouldn't be included. And I, and I do think that there are probably some things in the works with that. Um, I just like to see more dentists doing it. Um, and um, I think uh, the big one is, is that families just aren't aware that we exist. Yes. And um, a lot of times by the time we're seeing the patients, uh, it'll be five or 10 years. And it's just because mm -hmm. people just don't know. Um, so I just like there to be more awareness um, that it's possible. And, and there are medical issues. I mean, it's so weird that we look at vision and dental as completely separate items for our care. And like it's a separate part of our body. Our whole body is connected. What types of things uh, are concern you most in regards to physical conditions to our bodies that are that start within our our mouth? Um, what are the things yeah. that are most concerning to you? Yeah, in regards I, to those things? I I think the really the biggest one, which um, no one really talks about, is aspiration pneumonia. Mm. Um, so many of our geriatric patients end up in the hospital with like the diagnosis aspiration pneumonia mm -hmm. and um, the mouth is filled with bacteria and that's why we brush our teeth. And um, if a person has a situation where their mouth is filled with plaque and calculus, they're just breathing in that bacteria and that can cause pneumonia. Um, and that to me seems like the most sort of like obvious, easy thing to try to prevent it is getting regular dental care. Right. Um, and of course there's like the associations with heart disease and even Alzheimer's and um, just so many and diabetes and so many other things. But I feel like aspiration pneumonia isn't something that this like long lasting disease that causes other things. It's really like, oh, you're just breathing something in. And if we can prevent that, that's such a yeah. huge deal. Wow. Yeah. So how often do you recommend an older adult to have their teeth cleaned? Uh, I would say that depends on the person. Um, sure. So if they are able to brush their teeth really well uh, or have um, caregivers that are able to help them, um, then maybe a month recall, which is, which is like the normal healthy recall. Um, I do have some patients that we're seeing um, on a two or three month recall. It just depends on what's possible. And sometimes um, even when the caregivers aren't able to clean well, because the person is maybe resistant, I, something about the dentist coming in, there's like a positive white coat syndrome where people are a little bit more yeah. willing to let us do the work than sure. a caregiver. 
Sure. Um, so it just really depends. So, so how about dental, just toothbrushes as far as people at home and what, what are the best results that you think a caregiver can get or Ooh, um, I, this an is, individual? I actually have a great website to refer you guys to. Yeah. Um, it's called specializedcare.com. Specialized and, care. and um, they have these amazing toothbrushes that are, um, that actually have like a few angles of the bristles. And so you don't have to pay attention to cleaning on the inside because it just automatically cleans on the inside. Huh. And um, this website also sells um, uh, these foam blocks that will help people stay open that a caregiver can use and the person can safely bite down on. Oh. Um, and I would say that has been the thing that I've been exposed to actually from a hygienist who uh, takes care of special needs patients. And it's Honestly, it's changed my practice. Wow. Um, it's just so comfortable. Some, I, For some reason, sometimes the electronic toothbrushes, if a person didn't grow up using them, they might have a difficult time adjusting to it. So really, that's just you know person-dependent. But these okay. toothbrushes, I think, are a game changer. Interesting. Specialtycare.com? Spe Specializedcare.com. And, and the toothbrush, I believe, is called um, like the surround toothbrush. Interesting. Uh, oh, what a yeah. great tip. Yeah, I it's amazing. <laughs> Fantastic. What else? What else do you think we should know before we we head on to Melinda? Um, yeah, I uh, when I get calls um, and so it's oftentimes I get a call because there's an emergency. Um, sure. And I, um, have, I, I view that as an, uh, an invitation for people to remember that dental care is important. Mm -hmm. And that our goal is um, is prevention, um, always. Um, and that's why it's so important not to forget about dental care. Mm -hmm. uh, because care gets more and more complicated down the road. And yes. maybe the mobility gets um, more difficult. And maybe, let's say, if dementia gets worse, mm -hmm. um, maybe the care becomes more difficult. Sure. So, um, Cleanings and checkups really are the best thing that we can do to care for our families and ourselves. Oh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. For yourself too. Oh, how many caregivers do you wind up, family caregivers do you wind up taking care of in addition to the patient that you're seeing? Because they're just not getting out either because they can't leave their loved I, one. That does happen. Although I do, I always tell people, if you can get out to a dentist, you should go out to a dentist. And we do the best we can at home. But um, if you can have access to a pano, which we can't do, if you can access more things in an office, then you should do that. If not, we're the perfect option for you. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, maybe you'll join us at the very end, but please go ahead and make sure that if you need mobile dentistry, that you reach out to dental, uh, gentle, dental, mobile.com with Dr. <laughs> Mandel and one of her dentists. So Thanks, thank you Mary. so much. All right. We'll see you soon. All right. So let me see if we have Melinda here. I know we do, but let me see if I have her little, her little startup here. Here we go. Hello. How are you today? Good. Good morning. Good. So I wanted to give a couple of tips about um, cardiovascular health. Oh, nice. Um, Fantastic. A lot of our clients coming in for uh, strength training want to know, uh, you know, the best way to work their cardiovascular system. They want to know um, what they should be doing outside of their sessions at the strength shop to mm. um, enhance their cardiovascular health. Um, usually my answer is not much, um, in the way of what we think of as traditional cardiovascular exercise. Um, and I thought this, uh, this little tidbit or this little, uh, you know, discussion on cardiovascular health was appropriate, um, since we had a dentist because a lot of time oral care has a bigger impact on your cardiovascular health. Mm -hmm. Um, even, uh, you know, the doctor today touched on 
um, what can happen with uh, causing pneumonia, and then the heart and the lungs are intricately related and they cause are. problems for your cardiovascular system. Yeah. So oral hygiene is super important for cardiovascular health, um, more so than I would say what we think of as traditional cardiovascular exercise. So a lot of cardiovascular mm. exercise or what we think of as cardio is really steady state aerobic activity, like biking, running, um, you know, being on an, an elliptical or a Stairmaster. Sure. Um, a lot of these um, forms of exercise were coined cardio uh, due to a study of VO2 max, which is how, how skilled our cells are at huh. taking the oxygen that we're breathing and creating muscle energy which certainly those exercises will increase our VO2 max, the oxygen uptake of the cells. Um, but it doesn't do much beyond that for cardiovascular health. Um, and sometimes with those activities, there's a high cost for an older population, meaning there's a lot of wear and tear on the joints from repetitive movements. Right. Or there's a lot of force on the body because of you know your feet hitting the ground, for instance, if you're running. So sometimes um, better exercise would be like the slow strength training that we do in the, um, in the, at the strength shop or any other kind of exercise that gets the muscles to contract. Um, what people fail to realize when they think of cardio is that cardiovascular exercise makes the um, heart and lungs work harder than they're used to working so that they're, you know, working a, a little bit more, more um, intensely, but the heart and lungs work to serve the muscles. So the more oxygen, the muscles demand to do work, the harder the heart and lungs have to work to deliver the oxygen to the working muscles. Mm. So, um, it doesn't really matter what the activity is. The intensity of the activity matters how much our, our how hard, how intense our muscles are working. Huh. So we can get a great cardiovascular workout from lifting weights or even from gardening or some activities that we wouldn't think of as cardiovascular exercise. But as long as the muscles are working intensely, those muscles in order to do that work need oxygen because that's how our muscles work. And yeah. that's, that creates that effect in the heart and lungs. And that's how we can see what, if we, if we look at traditional exercise, traditional cardio, um, running, we know, has a bigger effect on our cardiovascular system. We feel our heart and lungs working harder than when we're walking. Sure. And all the, the difference between running and walking is that we're using our muscles more intensely to go faster. And the same thing if we're running uphill, we know that it's intense cardiovascular work. We're, we're more out of breath. We feel it in our heart and lungs more than oh, running yeah. on flat land. And it's just because we need to use our muscles more intensely to propel our body up when, mm -hmm. and, and as opposed to being on flat land. So really the key to a healthy cardiovascular system as it pertains to exercise is working the muscles intensely and having them place that demand on the heart and lungs. And then doing other things um, in life like proper um, dental hygiene that sure. will contribute to a healthy, you know, healthy lungs and a healthy cardiovascular system. Really nice. What a great, what a great connection and um, great information. I really appreciate <laughs> that. So let's go ahead and we'll see, we can bring back, um, let's see if we can bring Steve back and we'll bring, see if Dr. Mandela is still with us and we'll bring her back too. In fact, I think we, we might've lost Dr. Hi, Mandela. Steve. Hello. So we'll see if she comes hey, back. How are you? So, I'm great. How are you doing? I'm good. <laughs> so what, what day is it today? Well, as you know, there's always a couple, right? So it's National Oyster Day. Oh, ooh, National that's Oyster a good one. I like oysters. <laughs> yeah, right? I have to have a few. Yeah. It's uh, National Water Balloon Day. Okay. But it's also National International Beer Day. Oh, oh. you would think that would be October. But I guess that's just for the Germans. Maybe. It's good yep. to have that on a Friday when people are going to go out. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So well, I open a traditional beer and enjoy the day. There are lots of wonderful little craft brewers, neat little families that have started their own breweries, and it is fun <laughs> to support them. So maybe you can find right. one of them. Some of them have little food trucks or just a nice, fun way to 
spend time with family and they have puzzles and games and all kinds of fun little things. So maybe there will be something in there for you. I know we've got some great ones over in Monrovia. We have Pacific Plate and Hop Secret and Skywalker and a bunch of different little interesting ones from our office area. So have a great weekend. And until next week, stay well and, and have a have a good one. Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you.